All right, hello again, everybody. We are doing another round of reviews of, well, geometry and graphics functionality, heading for version 13 of Wolfram Language. All right, so where are we gonna start here? I think we're at region transformations and going down. Okay, so, I don't wanna do this. We need to wait for the folks who are involved with geometric tests. So let's go do graphics first. Okay. And let's come back up and do these other things. And is there any, any more news on Voronoi Mesh in 3D? Nope. I mean, time's running out. So, okay. The, the news is it's arriving, right? Yes. That's correct. The train is arriving at the station. Yes, hopefully, yes. Okay. One of these days you're going to say it just arrived because... <laughs> um, okay. All right. We had started talking about this last time, point light and so on. Um, and we had talked about putting it in style, right? Which, which works now, correct? But um, I think yes. we, need, we need to understand some things about coordinate systems and so on, right? Because I, I heard some discussion about um, um, uh, the fact that the image 3D coordinate system is different from these, right? So let me just understand what coordinate system when didn't we have some kind of um, projective coordinate system that we've used for millions of years for, okay. What coordinates is viewpoint in? Let's start with that. It's in the user coordinates, correct? Can somebody answer that? Roger, can you answer I mean, that? Go, go there. I think it supports more than one coordinate system. You see here down there, you see a table that's three coordinate systems supported. I and see. I think viewpoint supports more. So this is same. consistent with those, the, the, the coordinate systems. Okay, let's take a look. None of that's actually changed here. It's the same as before. No. Yeah. No, no, you see, this is something different. I thought this was different and it is in fact different. The viewpoint is given a special scaled coordinate system in which the longest side of the bounding box has length one. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So how does this relate to that? In other words, if I want my light, if, I'm, if I have a miner's lamp on, and I want to look from a viewpoint with a point light. How does that work? Well, so, I mean, so for the new light, I mean, this new directive, nothing changed. From... I, I don't care about that. I'm asking the question. We've got viewpoint, which is set in one coordinate system. Well, we haven't given well, view, the viewpoint coordinate system a name, so you can't use it very widely. I, I understand that, but the, apparently this it's, wasn't thought about. No, right? but is what I was yeah. going to say that, you know, the point coordinate system, the point you have there, like in point light, is mapped with the Cartesian coordinate system of the graphic, not related to the viewpoint. I'm, a, I'm aware. So, I'm aware. I'm, I'm asking what... Um, Uh, but you understand my question, right? Is there a reason? I don't know. And viewpoint was, was put into version one. Why is it that viewpoint does not use user coordinates? Because Any it's going to be, yeah, I think it's, it's because <laughs> these are intuitive, they're sort of a scaled coordinate system, basically. It would be widely inconvenient for most people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think okay. it's just that if you're doing, if you're just, I mean, if you're, if you're not really, especially in version one, if you just want to show something, you know, you're not caring about the details that much and you just want it to be aesthetic, then yeah, you just want to do it based on the user, user, or, you know, the, the viewpoint uh, coordinate system. And also that, you know, for plots, almost always you care about the viewpoint, uh, the viewport, you know, coordinate system. You don't care about the actual graphics coordinates. For instance, okay, if so, you would have any function that have a singularity, it would depend on the details where it cut off and such things. Okay, 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 fine. All right, so now explain why point light is, works differently. It works exactly the way it has worked. There's no different. I mean, 
it's the way it's worked all along. But there's no okay. that design discussion we should have had in version a uh, long time ago. Okay. I think the point is that it's something like point light, you know. I, I feel like the other the, the the like things like viewpoint is is more about like 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 it's more about just getting a generally roughly aesthetic image versus I want a light at exactly this position. It has to align with my graphics, right? I mean, it's a difference between like, if you're just trying to get, you know, a three, three light, you know, whatever it's called, a three light, you know, lighting setup versus if you actually want to have a light at a particular spot relative to your, you know, objects. Okay, but, but in that, I just want the lights at roughly the three light setup. Don't you want viewpoint like coordinate systems to specify that? I think that? you want scaled. I think scaled is what you're going Which to is say. different from viewpoint. I because think you want sometimes is... this and sometimes this. Yeah. There's no uniform. I mean, the, the, the viewpoint uh, camera, there are two cameras possible. The viewpoint camera, you can't go inside of the graphic. You have to be outside of the graphic. So right. it's a very special camera that views the world like kind of like a specimen that you look at from the outside. Right. And what happens? So viewpoint with numbers less than one simply doesn't work. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. No, no, it does work, but it distorts everything because if you because don't specify a few angles. Yeah, it's trying to find a view angle that incorporates the whole object. And so that goes very singular, I see that very weird. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but, but, but the thing I'm asking, with point light and so on, okay? Independent of the defensiveness of the fact that it's a, you know it was already implemented in a different way, explain why the coordinate system you want. In other words, if I wanted the light to be coming from the place where I'm looking at the graphic from, how would I do that? Did you see what I'm saying? I think that well, you, usually you place the light relative to the relatively to the scene. So that's kind of okay, but the answer is you don't know how to do it, right? No, no, we know how to do it, but it's too complicated. We if we want to do make that super easy, we I, have I to don't know if it's a, a good idea to make it easy. Maybe it isn't. We, I mean, in which case, we have to introduce a new coordinate system. Right. I'm just trying to understand what we actually have. You know, you know, what, what it was could the be statement? A, a viewpoint scaled coordinates. Right, but as opposed to image scale. But what about the viewport? Is that yet a different concept? No, the viewport. Is the, the port is a 2D thing. Um, the, the port is usually a 2D thing. You know, so it's, if you think of the, the frustum, yeah. you have the, the point camera, right? And you see like this square cone going out. Yep. Then you have the frustum, which is sort of, you know, that delineated by two planes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the port is the thing that gets projected onto that front piece, you know, of that cone. That's the port. Right. Okay. So I don't know why we right. brought up the port here, but it's... Okay. Well, well, actually, I mean, to ask a very basic question, I mean, don't the lights, I mean, if you're not using point light, don't the lights like follow the camera? Like if you rotate things, the lights, the lights don't move too, right? Unless you use point light. Does this question make sense? Yeah, the question is, what is the coordinate system in which the other light sources are well, the, the point is, as the camera moves, do when do the do the lights move? Yeah, that's the question. The directional light. What coordinate system does directional light usually use, guys? Guys, do you understand the question, right? Charles, Roger, please. Yeah. Okay. Do I need to I try it? Do I need Sorry? to try it? I need to try it. Okay, the question is, if I have a 3D graphic, right? I say plot 3D. The light, the light, the, 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 it doesn't light. follow the camera. The light moves with the scene. Yeah. Right? So if you rotate it. Wait, I think it follows the camera by default. Like if you just do, if you just do this. Yeah, and if you rotate it, don't, don't the shadows move up. around a little bit. So it depends if it's scaled or not, right? So... Okay, so with these lights... Yeah, the shadows what, what, are changing. Well, here, look, maybe I want to do a cuboid or something. I mean, you can see in the... Well, okay. 
Do you want to send something in? No, no, I mean, this will work too. I mean, if you just look at, you know, that face is lit. And now if you rotate it, a different face would be lit. Right. So the light is off here in the coordinate system that is has nothing to do with the rotating coordinate system of the object itself. The lights are fixed outside of the specimen box. Correct, guys? Is that correct? Charles, Roger. Yes, that's correct for the default light. And it okay, is fine. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, are you hiding something here? I mean, the, what, what happens for these lights? Okay, what is the default lights lighting? What is it in terms of these symbolic objects? So is in the documentation, I don't know the value explicitly. No, no, I understand, but, but, but it's the same coordinate system. So it's the lighting. Okay, so like standard, what is that? In the default positions, what are the default positions? I think you can do absolute oh. options and get it. Yeah. Oh, I think it's documented under the gen, you know, generalization and extension. We have all the list of automatic accent and neutral values there. Well, here, if I just take this and I say absolute options and then lighting. <laughs> useless. Okay, where do I look? Under generalization. Something is wrong with this version as I've been reporting for the last two weeks about scrolling. Is it the scrolling? Yeah, I mean, they found the memory leak bug that you anticipated it would be. Amazing. <laughs> Um, okay. It's equivalent to the following explicit setting. Okay. So what would this be in terms of the symbolic primitives? So it'll be exactly well, the it'll be exactly the same, but the only difference is that now is more redirective. So you will do a graphic 3D, ambient light, bracket followed by the color. Okay, okay. So light. so this is an image scaled coordinates. So what does that mean, image scaled coordinates? What, why does that do the thing that we're seeing it doing here? What does image scaled mean? What, where is image scale locked down to? Is that, is that relative to the viewing that I have in the notebook? Relative to the bounding box, right? Or the final displayed no, image. Of the displayed image. Image. Right? Right, as opposed to the graphics object, which is flapping around, moving around here, right? So if I were to change this, so let's say I would do to do this, okay? I'm just gonna remove that there. For what it's worth, we got Brett for this current conversation in case he's helpful. Okay, so I am irreducibly confused here. Okay, so there we've got two cases here. Okay, so now we're moving it around. And I see the that sphere does not appear to change its does not change its appearance because the lights are locked relative to my eye. Is that correct, guys? Looks that way. Okay, can, can, Charles, aren't you responsible for this fun? Who is responsible for this functionality? It's me. Okay, and so yes, then you can you explain the answer here? Is this, this is not, is, is locked relative to the notebook, correct? And to my eye. And that's why this is not changing its appearance. Is that correct? Right, relative to the bounding box, yes. No, no, no. What are you saying bounding box? This is a bounding box. This box here. You're not talking about that bounding box. You're talking about the bounding, the box, bounding box that is defined by this, right? Exactly, yes. The X, Y is relative to that. Okay, what's the Z? Z is into the page and out of the page. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Orthogonal to the plane of the display. Okay, so image scale has X going across here, y, y going up here, and Z coming out of the page. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And the scaled is, it's just 
as a fraction of the size of the bounding box or something. Yes. And of Z the, is just the no, same wait, you just said bounding y. box, which is yeah, totally the, confusing. You mean the graphics box? The graphics, right? Right. Okay. So this is now moving around, and the lights. You know, it'd be really nice. And is there an option which actually displays the lights? No, but um, actually, I built prototypes for this a long time ago. I think we need to come back to that. Um, Why don't we at least have a WFR function that will show you the lights? Yeah, but someone needs to write it. I think I that we should develop it. I mean, yeah, but it's not good enough. That's why it's not out. I mean, it's, well, I know, but for WFR, you could just have little spheres at the position. Eh, the no. And the lights are outside of the box, typically. Yes, that's true. Well, so you'd have to have arrows going to the lights. That's a mess. Okay, you I mean, admit that's you, a mess. You could have like a diagram that showed where the lights were relative to some representation of that graphic. Sure. Um, right. The graphic has to be small in its specimen box, so to speak. And okay. Okay. No, but there are other things like that. You also want to see where the camera is and where the frustum is. There are all kinds of these right, I agree. scene setup things that I think are useful to do. Right. Um, so this is essentially another view of graphics. It's a wrapper. It's called, you know, uh, graphics arrangement or something, where you can say graphics arrangement of graphics 3D. And graphics arrangement is a is the kind of is formats as um, right. Yeah, it will show you, it can show you these additional objects. And you kind of typically want like little coordinates, like you want a sort of an XYZ, you know, axis on the camera. So you see where it's pointing and which, you know, where's the XYZ axis going. And you can have the same for some of the other elements, like a directional light, it's kind of useful to see. Uh, point light doesn't matter so much, but some of the others are. All right. Okay, so I think I understand this. I think I'm good with this. Is there anything else that we need to look at? Are there any special features here? So directional light. It comes from infinitely far away. I understand. By the way, I really hate it when people do this in documentation. If we, Unless there's a really good reason, you should copy that stuff into this. Okay, that's the um, RBS commenting and specify ambient diffuse and specular highlights. I believe we have that capability. Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, Ethan is asking for method arrow ray tracing. Do we have a method arrow ray tracing? No. Not yet. We have prototypes of it, but no. Okay. Okay. All right. Should I look at anything else in these? Um, I mean, sorry, the directional light. From the vector from point one to point two. Okay, but but it's it's a um, projective it's a, thing. What? It's projective. That is all that matters is the direction. The thing is infinitely far away. It's like the sun. Why is that projective? Because it only cares about the direction of the vector. It does not care about the the uh, uh, you know where where it is relative to the object. Right. 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 It doesn't. No, absolutely. Okay. There's no attenuation, no, no intensity falling off or anything like that. Is it's... that for spotlight? Yeah, there is. What is it? Is it inverse square? Yes. It's not great, but that's what these graphic shaders do. What do you mean it's not great? I mean, inverse square is inverse square. Yeah, but it's kind of hard to specify. That last case, ATT. The attenuation, yeah. Yeah. And you see that as an inverse square. Oh, boy. Fine. Are there formats for people storing lighting specifications? You know, when people make a movie and they have, you know, a whole team that does the lighting for a scene, I mean, in a, an animated movie, is there a specification? How, how do people carry those things around? Do you know what I'm asking? 
Have you looked? I haven't looked at that of recent. We know that there's just like that for shaders, but the question is, is that for lighting setup? In principle, there should be. Right. Most, that, of the, most of those forms also carry the light, yes. But also, in, in principle, and you know, when we get more advanced rendering, where there's more types of lights, like area lights, this is a, an example of something we don't have. Because then you need uh, basically global lighting calculations. Right, but um, these are already pretty complicated specifications. What, what does Maya do, for example? How does it carry around this information? Well, I mean, okay, so there, there are a bunch of, you know, 3D formats, like I know Autodesk has FBX, I think, which I think we also support to some extent, which can, re which can store, you know, the lighting configuration. But that's different from like the shaders and that's different from like the, you know, what's the attenuation function? That's just, oh, I've got a this light here and a that light there and, and so on. But so if I mean, we send one of our scenes to FBX format, will we expect that it will preserve and then we import it again? We export this. I mean, if, if I say export string of line four to um, FBX, is that the name of the format? Yeah. I mean, I guess that could work, although it's pretty, I don't know. I think FBX is like technically proprietary, although we do support some things with them. What but, is this? Um, what is this? Is there well, a current failure in the... In okay, the all right. That built? Okay, fine. But, but, but we would expect that this, were we to export this, this would losslessly be able to make the round trip. Is that what we expect or not? Yes, when we are able to do that with high fidelity. Currently, we just support the geometry, right? And, you know, the whole so, so, version, we are going to support the texture and after texture lighting. Okay, fine. More general but yeah, there, isn't so, a, there isn't a separate thing like a, you know, like a PEM file for lighting or something where you just have the lighting information. So for some formats, they do have some stuff a little like that. So like, for example, with OBJ, uh, they have a separate MTL file for the textures. Although I don't think they have anything for lights. I mean, the, the basic thing is that most 3D formats are just restoring models and maybe their textures, but right. basically lights are just thought of as other objects in the scene. And there aren't that many formats for representing like a whole scene. Um, right. So, yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Is there anything else we should look at with these lighting specifications? This all looks like a nice thing. I mean, some of this oh, looks... But, but that's it for now. Okay, RBS on our live stream is commenting about Fong illumination. We certainly have Fong, Fong shading, but I guess we don't call it that. I don't know. What right. is the default lighting model we are using? And material shading can emulate all that. It's a more advanced emulator for that. Okay. I thought we were using Guro shading by default. We have the capability to do Fong shading with an arbitrary exponent, right? We've had that for like decades. All right, okay. Well, I don't think in um, Tim and Brett for the lighting stuff, so I think I could let you two go now. Uh, unless they have any further comment about this. But wait a minute, what, what about these three point lights and things like this? Wait a minute, and then the lighting effects, only the shaded material, What what is this? Hold on, hold on, what is this here? What is no material shading is a style, you know. It's it's like a color, right? Yes, but what, what is the what this is saying is okay. So let me, let me just understand what this is. Okay, so let's say this is just a display list. So right right now it's not working. But so there is always so our you know directional light have you know fixed argument parametrization. Right. But we can also extend it to support, for example, the three point light where we have automatically. You know, hold on, hold on. Somebody capture that message, please. Yep. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. So, a three point oh. light is three directional lights. Okay, so if I got rid of this, it won't work. I don't think we. Okay, but because of, because of just the way, it, because of today, it doesn't work. Is that right? Right, so it's an extension we're planning to add for directional light, where you can take a string, three-point light, and then we actually instantiate it into, you know, the three okay. different point light. But, but what does this have to do with material shading? This, this is, you're saying if I do this, then this will affect only the sphere. 
and it's the same as saying style, sphere, material shading, gold, you know, directional light, three point. That will affect just that style delimited thing, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. And, and what you were saying there about directional lights is, if I have that, is those are named types of directional lights, correct? Yes. And and doesn't lighting in general have a have a bunch of named configurations? Yes. Okay, so what's the relationship between those? So those are string names for lighting itself. I'm confused here. There's a string name three point for the whole lighting option. What's the relationship okay. between that and the string name for directional light? Right. It's Sorry, Gosha. No, it's the same thing. This is a this is a global option. The one is an inline um, uh, directional light, and three point. All of these are directional light. Okay, let me ask this question. You know, in the theater lighting business, for example, or well, uh, the, the two models would presumably be the, well, three. There's that. There's photographers. You know, taking pictures of like people, and there's taking pictures of, you know, random food or specimens or whatever else. I'm quite certain that there are names for lots of lighting configurations in all of those different uh, areas. Is that true yes. or not? Yes, it's true. And, and three point is one of those. It, it's, okay. a set, it's a set of lights. Okay. With which are all white. Yes. But so, so if I look up, you know, if I look up, um, I don't know, theater lighting configurations or something, do I find, um, you know, is there some standard way that those are described? I just don't know anything about this. I mean, yeah, you, you've but, got a main light and a uh, secondary light and a backlight. Okay. It's, it's for mainly for photography, for studio photography. But... I mean, you know, I, I, if I just go to the web and I look this up, I see pictures like this. Oh, Stephen, this is a whole story. Okay. Then you want them to change over time, too. Right. Okay. Well, well the key lights, the fill lights. Yes. Yes. This, this is a whole this is, this is our whole story. I understand that. But so what I'm trying to understand is, you know, we're going to have some named examples, right? Of, well, like, like for example, you know, okay. The thing I'm trying to understand is, where are we going with this? Is there going to be some repository of named lighting configurations? Or are we going to have some lighting configurations here? Or what's the idea? We uh, right now we're not pushing this. I mean, I had long time ago, but right now we're not pushing this farther for, for right now. So, so far, like accent and three point, those were designed specifically for shaders. Okay, I mean, but this seems like it's rather low hanging fruit. Oh, am I wrong? I mean, in other words, in other words, we can just incrementally add. You know, if there's a named configuration of lights that's used for this or that, you know, but, these are things we, we can don't need with. a repository. We don't need any. We don't need a suppository <laughs> or anything. <laughs> but uh, I, okay, but that, so explain how you're going to do this. Wait, we're so, not doing it. I mean, but so that's the answer. You're not doing it. So if you're not doing it, if we had, you know, the question is if if users were interested in adding a collection of different lighting configurations, if this is even useful, how would they do it? I mean, for, for one thing, I'm not sure how many different named lighting configurations there are. Like, I mean, looking this up just now, it, it's like, yeah, there are a lot of different configurations of three point lights and there's some mild modifications and so on, but I'm not sure it's like, I don't think there are 25 different famous, you know, lighting configurations that we okay. should support. All right, okay, fine. So it's not the case. So when people specify, I mean, you know, when people come in to photograph some random thing and they bring all these lights, right? I mean, we've we've we definitely got people in our video team, for example, at the company who would know the know how this works. I do not know. And 
you know, when you come in and people say, oh, I'm going to set up all these lights, or a photographer comes in and sets up a bunch of lights, they have names for all those lights, all the light, all the, they have names for the functionality of those lights, like key lights and things like this, right? Which is not what sure. we're doing here. I mean, I also think that I'm not sure how automatically, I mean, you can, I'm not sure how automatically you can do a lot of that stuff anyway, because it's like, if you have some complicated graphic scene, the, the point that, that the person, that the photographer is doing when they're setting up all the lights I and mean, they're getting the basic three lights. And then they're also, you know, trying to be like, oh, I want a little more key light on this object. And I want a little less on this object. Yeah, I understand. And I mean, and that's just not going to happen automatically. Yeah, all right. Okay, fine. I mean, so you're saying it's like saying in an image, what's in there? Oh, let's have seven standardized names of images, which would not make any sense. You're, you're saying that lighting, the specification of lighting. Yeah. All right. Well, fair enough. Um, let's see. There are various comments here about uh, comment that we should have Fong shading as a name somewhere that you can find. If we don't, we should have that. We should check that. Ultra is asking, is the Kronos standard GITF supported? What is that a standard for? What is that? Anybody know what that is? But Kronos is the standardization group that works on Renews to OpenGL standard, among other things. The the the, the thing that the, I don't know what they the, what was that thing that they mentioned. Loading of scenes for for um, 3D asset delivery. Well, the, so the GITF is one file format in the list of what will support. So GITF, we have it. No, not yet. Okay, but it's it's one of the ones we intend to have. Yes. Okay. And it's a 3D object format. Is that right? Yes. Oh, I see. It says loading 3D scenes and models and applications. Okay. Yep. Okay. That looks like a useful thing. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Seems rather recent. Okay. Uh Alembic format. What is that? Anybody know what that is? Where are you looking? I mean, you're on some other screen. Yeah. Um, I don't know what this is. Somebody has to look this up separately. This looks like a format for some kind of database thing. I don't understand this. Okay. Um, open Game Engine Exchange. Do we know what that is? Nope. Okay. So somebody, um, who's, is Brady? Can you collect these things? Yeah, I am. Okay. Send them out. Okay. Obvious talking about various kinds of shading. We have these. We've had them for years, flat, grow, fong shading. We have them. We have all, oh, I see. The fong illumination model is a lighting model. It can be used for all three. Okay, I was confused by that. Yeah. Fong shading, I mean, fong shading means that you interpolate the normals across the, um, like a triangle. And then you compute, um, you run the shading equation on each point inside of there. If you use Guro shading, you interpolate the colors, but you use, uh, but you don't interpolate the normals. So it's a little bit simpler. And that's what, what OpenGL right. was running. Okay, by the way, Alembic seems to be an ILM and Sony and Imageworks. That's presumably the original, what that used to be. Oh gosh, what was, Pacific Data Images, is that the company that became? I don't know. I lost track of what turned into what. Um, okay, that, that seems to be another file format here. Thank you. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Doug is commenting on view vector can be used to specify the absolute coordinates of the camera. Yes. That's the other camera. Viewpoint has this funky coordinate system which views everything as a specify. View vector allows you to put the camera anywhere. I see. 
I see. Okay. All right. Let's change topics here. Okay. So, so the, the conclusion is there's nothing more to do on, we, we have certain standard lighting configurations. We don't think there's a value to any other ones, although there might be ones that we could invent that will be useful for viewing certain kinds of objects, but that there's nothing out there in the general world that we could, that will be familiar to people that we could uh, sort of use the name of. Is that correct? Yes, no. yeah. yep. Okay. All right. Changing topics. Thanks to folks who are here for the um, uh, for the lighting discussion. We are now changing topics to region congruent and related things. Okay. See you. Thanks. Bye. Okay, Michael. Have you seen these functions? Region nope. congruent, etc. No. Okay. So, geometric test has a has a congruent testing thing right i think so it has similar and congruent congruent there we go so what's an example of what region test would take as input would take like a disk and a disk that what it test takes and then congruent doesn't seem like no, I don't think that will store its syntax. By the way, for a function which has just an unbelievable number of of, um, of capabilities, the fact that it only has like eight examples is really a bit disappointing. Yes, we could add some more. I think there should be in a list, the two disk. Yeah, right. Okay, so geometric tests, the two lists, the two disks, and saying, are they congruent? Yes, they are congruent. Okay, all right. So now that's related to being able to say region congruent here of disk and disk. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. What? It'll be fixed. Poss possible issue with the merge and all the, you know, prototype not stable. It should be congruent, the identity. Right. Well, so, I mean, that's just a bug, presumably. Yes. I mean, is anything going to work here? Okay. Okay. So, but is anything going to work? I mean, is, is this worth yeah, trying? If you, if you look at the example in the documentation, this is a basic rule. Something is, is wrong in the code. It's some stuff you are, you know, tracing, tracing down. What the heck is this? Wait a minute. This is a ridiculously complicated first example. No, 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 no. We, we are working on the documentation. They are not yet okay, reviewed. Okay, 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 okay you know. fine. Okay, so this example is absurdly complicated. So you can take a rectangle and then you can take a polygon, right? So and the function should try to work and figure that out. I know, but but if, if this had a parameter in it, is it going to give me the condition? Yeah, it should try to give you the condition, yes. Um, okay. Uh, All right. Now, how does that relate to what Michael's geometric test does? Would it give conditions or not? No. I, I have a question to the new function. Obviously, the geometric test is specialized for synthetic geometry in the plane. Well, it does well, give you conditions. just said it gave no test. I mean, gave no conditions. It's got the got condition. Uh, okay. It depends on how complicated the example is. Okay. Uh, so say you have two implicit regions, one with less and one with less equal. Are they congruent or not? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that again? He's Assuming asking about open and closed regions. Yes. Yeah. Are they congruent? Is an open region congruent to a closed region? Um, no. In our case, you, that means there they should be a map. So if there is no explicit map where you get the identity at the end, they shouldn't be congruent. 
Okay. So, okay. So I'm asking then again, I mean, do we, does it bother us that we have these two functions that work no. like this? No. Okay. Explain why. I mean, in other words, you're, you're saying you consider these, this is overlapping functionality where in the case of geometric test, right? It has tons of tests. Region congruent needs to work on all regions, not just some 2D regions. I, I don't care. Do the name geometric test. Well, I don't care either. Regions. So it doesn't you know. say 2D regions, right? I'm trying but, to understand just because one was built by one team, one was built by another team. The whole point of these design reviews is to try and make sure we don't end up with something with crazy seams where you can tell how the thing was built. Well, I think the, the, the main key point, so, so region congruent, I, I don't think we expect that, you know, in the next release, geometry tests will work on nerves. No. So region congruent should work on all geometric region, nerve, mesh. Right. Um, whatever so so this is geometric test is something which over the years might eventually work on, you know, a wider range of things, including 3D and so on. Although clearly it will be different because because clockwise isn't relevant to 3D, presumably. Right. I mean, right. That, uh, also let's a little bit keep the history in mind. Geometric test we added after we had geometric assumption because geometric assumption, we wanted to have a pure statement that something is the case. We didn't want to test for it. We just want to say it should be so. Uh, so without any evaluation semantics. And then we add the test to then do the corresponding checks. Right. But so you see no conflict, Michael, no. between geometric test and this region congruent. I mean, that's similar to what we just discussed on Monday in the, in the chemistry meeting. Like we have as one of the sub value properties of a molecule, the molecular law mass, but yet we can have our own function molecular mass that it's a... Fine. Right. I agree. I agree. I'm, but you know, I think you. It's a reasonable question to ask. And yeah, I guess definitely. the answer is is that. Um, okay, so then these functions all seem like they're going to be okay. Are, are there any? Are there any notable features of these that, Roger? Do you want to highlight anything about? Of course, what should not happen is that they give different results. <laughs> no, they because shouldn't. they are written by different people, that might maybe the case. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, well, I think it's that, a, that, that would be a bug, obviously. Right, but but it's bug. it's obviously a very good benchmark to do, right? If if they are inconsistent result, there is investigation needed, right? Yes. Um, the the other thing I want to highlight is region transform, but I think that we wanted to name it find region transform. That <laughs> finds the actual mapping. And this, this is, is an, uh, the one in EN. Um, yeah. Probably um, look at find region transform. I think. It's yeah. Cool. Oh, the old one is still left. Okay. Right. So the... It finds a fine or it finds more general. What type of transformations can it find? Right now, it will try. It, it will find a fine transforms. Okay. So no. No no scalings involved. Yeah, scaling, scaling is fine. Scaling, scaling is fine. fine. Okay, scaling. Scaling is that fine. So similar. But in general, there could be, you know, a, a conformal, you know, some arbitrary conformal map thing, which this isn't doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, linear fractional would be the next. Okay. Yeah. You know, level. But yeah. you know, and and if you go, and at some point, some, th th this is not going to be this function. If you want to find something way more general, I think. We don't even know yet. Okay, but but so most likely, fine region transform could eventually have a third argument, which says in what space to try to find transforms. Yes, but the default will be an affine transform, which is what it's doing right now. Right. Okay, and what it returns. Is this transformation function. function, which can represent up to linear fractional, you know, linear Should, affine linear fraction. But the input rectangle and parallelogram are exact objects. Should it return 
transformation function with the numbers inside. Good point. Probably should be exact. If we yeah, can. I would say so. And and can it deal with parameters or not? I don't know, Charles. Yes, it will. It will work like everything else. You should, you know, if you have parameters, you should return with parameters. We are working on that. So, so it doesn't work yet. Or does it work? Does it work here? We should try. That's all I can say. We are working on that. I mean, it's a non-trivial problem, so it's. Uh, that's a surprising thing, but that's okay. Wait. Oh. What are the parameters to a parallelogram? Take a point uh, on the vector. Can I, if I just give a vector, will it will it work? No. Um, well, I have to go. Well, I can't. Zero, remember. zero, zero, followed by two vectors in a list. Okay. The symbolic okay. case is probably not in this current build. So we, okay, you have to build the whole process for symbolic only. Okay. Okay. So what, what else do we want to look at here? So what is geometric transformation? These are old things. These are things that we introduced in version six, which are part of the graphics language. We, what we've now done is that we accept them part of the geometry language. So Okay. And, and so Michael, rotate, for example. So So... Wait a minute. So if I say here, for example, region congru okay, so let, let's first of all, let's just say rotate uh, rectangle 30 degrees. Oh, that's funny. What? I mean, I know what that did, but but how do you turn that into a, a region? That so is a region. It's, it's a region now. So it's what region Q added. of that is true. Or you can do area of that. Region. What's that? You I can do area of that. Region. Right. So what the heck is that? That is uh, unsimplified area. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what you expect. <laughs> I mean, it's it's correct, but it's maybe not what you would want. <laughs> That's this new uh, WFR anti simplified that probably has been applied. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. But, 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 so this is Trump representing <laughs> yeah. this here has a very bizarre print form, but is basically representing this rotated rectangle. So if I say, for example, if I say region union of percent 15, comma, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, rectangle. Right. And then post process, we do slash slash region. Okay. Why? Slash slash re because you want to see the visual. Okay. Fine. That's nice. This is a very weird thing, though. People will be very confused by the fact that that produces that, and yet it works. And I wow. think that's actually also the ambiguity because, for example, if you replace the rectangle by a mesh, discretize it, then return you a mesh. So there's also that. And essentially, Correct. that's that, you know, the auto evaluation. I mean, we don't manipulate graphic primitive, right? we keep them unevaluated. So this is discretized graphics, right? Yes. Or discrete. I can I use discretized region there as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah that will work. Can you please run the full form of that, though? Because we can't tell just by looking at that. Oh, you mean? It's okay, yeah. Region. Although I guess this is this is fairly. Um, I mean, I don't know of any other places where rotate actually evaluates to something. Although I mean, it makes sense that it does it here. Well, what do you mean? Something. I what think you mean? Yeah, yeah, here it's it's evaluates it's symbolically. Yeah. In this case, if I say input form of that, I think it makes perfect sense. I mean, that, that it's yeah, just it the rotated sense, thing. I'm just, I, I don't know of any other place where, where it actually evaluates, though. But yeah. And so rotate works in 3D, does it, or not? Yeah. Yes. I mean, not the full generality, but no, pretty general, actually, in 3D. Pretty, yeah. pretty okay. Yeah, you have the all the yeah, yeah, yeah. It has. I, I didn't realize it, it, it adopted the whole thing, right? Yeah, okay, 
All right. Well, this seems fine. Is there anything else that we should look at with find? This is the oh, whole. Yeah, there's the numerical precision business. What? Of the find region transform business. Oh. Yes. What Michael the numerical asked. Numerical precision. I mean. They didn't preserve it. Well, infinite oh, it will precision be fixed. And it's, 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 it's a bug. You know, exact should return exact. I mean, yeah. that's not an issue. I mean. Okay. That's. Okay. Sorry, what were you going to say? There's the whole issue of dot, 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 what? Me? You were just saying there's the whole issue of in connection with find region transform. No, no. I said that, that was it. That was, that was the whole thing. Okay, but so find region transform. If the thing is slightly distorted, what is its tolerance? And does it have a tolerance specification? No, if I, if, we, use, we use the default system tolerance for numbers, right? Which but wait a minute. Different. Last time we were talking about a problem with that. What was that problem? Because there is, oh, no, okay, yes. So there is, um, uh, there is a um, fine transformation the image function between points. What is that? That's find, geometric, too... find geometric transform. Yeah. What's the difference between that and find geometric transform? And geometric... So, okay, so... this is what we were discussing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay so what this is the relationship point... between find region transform and find geometric transform? So find geometric transform you know, actually does the fitting. So for a given set of, of a point, P1 to P2, it gives you the mapping, the best fit of a linear transform from P2 to P1. And what right. the heck is that thing there? So that's actually the error because it's a pure fitting problem, you know, function. So it gives you the actual error in, you know, it can actually- Oh yes. gosh. So find geometric transform and find region transform do completely different things. Or do they both, they both return transformation? The, the goal, at least both seem to have the same goal, which is to actually find a mapping between two set, point set or two regions. Represented by a transformation function. Yes. But one does a fitting. So it try to approximate, even though the input is not, I mean, the mapping is not exact, try to approximate it. And find geometry transform actually work on um, other sets. So essentially, if you, you know, if you give a set of points and then you just you know, apply a random permutation, you get different answer. Where find um, region transform, since it's a geometric function, it doesn't actually matter how you actually give the set of points. Wait a minute, but if I'm trying to find a transformation between two images, there's yet a different function. Is that correct? No, that, that's no, it's, two, it's the two, same two, no, it's the same function. So what you do for images is you get key points. Okay. And then, because the transformation convention that we implemented for images is backwards. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, God. Do you remember that? It, it, it sort of goes backwards. Um, so this one returned a backwards transformation. Oh, because this okay. function actually is. But it makes sense for images. It makes right. sense for images, but not for geometry. So Except that this is called fine geometric transform, but it applies to images. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, I think we've got a mess on our hands here. Yeah, okay, let's go through what what the things are. Case one, we've got a collection of points. It's a point cloud. You're trying to rotate the point cloud. Is that correct? Trying to find. Is this point cloud related to this other point cloud by a rotation, for example? Is that right? Yes. Okay. So case number two, I've got two images. I want to find out, you know, if I take, if I say something like, you know, image rotate, uh, you know, image of a penguin, Okay, great. So that object there, so, so if I say, what function will tell me how that penguin is rotated? Uh, Stephen, I, I think what you said earlier is not quite right. I think 
fine geometric transform does not find the transformation between two point clouds, but between the points of two point clouds. So the order matters. Yes, the order I see matters. What you're saying. So it's, what I it's not a point cloud. It's a it's a numbered set of points in a point cloud. Okay. Can I find the transformation between these two penguins? Well, you have to get key point. You have to get points first of all. I see. I see. I see. So, so this function, geometric transform, only deals with lists of points. Yes. I mean, is there a function that deals with images? Find geometric transform work on images. So, if you try to give them, it doesn't those say that here. It doesn't it's, say that. The, here. the third, the third details the, in the notes, right? You have the third. No. Oh, oh well, that down one there. there. Which yep. it does, oh that's that's not right at all. Okay, so find geometric transform percent twenty four and percent twenty five. What the heck is that? Okay, so how do I find out what that is actually doing? How do I apply that transformation function to a, a rectangle? You can apply it to an image because it has the right. Okay, okay, so. Then I say percent sub two for some bizarre reason, apply that to percent 25. Okay, what happened? I think you have to use image transformation. Yeah, you have to, yeah. Why, would, why wouldn't that work? I mean, maybe you can make the argument because it doesn't know whether to do a forward or reverse transform, but- That's yeah, a very because it's basically argument. Image, yeah. Okay, so what, what, what happens here? I say image transformation and then I give the transformation there. Think image, come on F. Okay. No, wrong, wrong place. Yeah, image. You put in the you image. Paste in the image oh. in the transformation function. Image yeah. trans. No, no, just oh, I'm, I'm totally confused. confused. Just, just paste it there, and then a comma. Yes, thank you. <laughs> what? It's some maybe, small maybe part of the head the of the rotated, penguin. Wait, maybe, maybe try the, the, the rotated one. Maybe this is the, the reverse of what we think it is. OK, the uh, penguin is lost. No it's a lost penguin. It's a black hole. Um, <laughs> Okay, so look, we've got, we've got. I kind of think that this should work, and there probably should be examples down there. So I'm a little bit unsure of if there's something temporary with uh, the, the the prototype. Well, this is, doesn't give any examples here. This is a not very well documented thing. Okay, but we have no idea how to reapply this. Okay, so we've got multiple things and i have to go in a moment here so we've got multiple things going on we've got find geometric transform which deals with lists of points we've got find geometric transform region transform yeah no We're, sorry geometric wait a minute we've got find region transform which deals yeah. with regions yes then we've got the older find geometric transform which deals with points and images, right? We only have two. No, we've got no. two. We've got the new find region transform. We've got the old find geometric transform. Those yes, are the those two. two. But right. there are three types of things on which those operate. Point lists, images, and region specifications. Correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Currently, Find geometric transform operates on point lists and, and image specification images, right? Whereas find region transform operates only on regions. Is that correct? Yes. It does not operate on point lists. It does. Yes. No, it, it does. I mean, you. Oh, okay, points, that's why I'm point, asking this. Point, point is a geometric. Point is a geometric region, right? It's... Okay, but I, I'm no. Is it point p o i n t t or is it point like this one? In other words, can I take this example here, right? Go from this example here. Yes. And say, find geometric transform. Okay, and now I say, oh God, this is a mess, guys. But, but as, a, really as a region, a they, are no longer, yes. they are no longer ordered. Exactly. 
is what region, I pointed out earlier. Kind of fastball. Exactly. For a region, you know, we don't care about the order of the point. Where find geometric transform, they have to be ordered. Okay, well, that's an interesting difference. And this insane thing that this returns that as its first argument. Not really insane. It's a fitting function. I mean, like find minimum. Exactly. It's a fitting yeah. function. So you return the error. Fit. You return the minimum. This is the, yeah, you want to minimize the, the error, and this is the minimum. And you want to know how good it is. Okay. So you guys believe that find geometric transform and find region transform are consistent. Is that true? Even though the transformation functions given here are utterly different. Possibly one is the inverse of the other. I don't know. Can I apply one transformation function to the other? We need to clarify a little bit more clearly so that the relations, this would be properties and relations, how they relate. I know. I don't know. Why doesn't that work? Uh, those uh, are two functions. You have to compose them. Yeah, composition. We have a function, function for that, composition. Is this going to work? Yes. What's it going to do? Is it going to show their inverses? It's going to show the composition of those two functions, which I is a new transformation that. function. What the heck is the relationship between these two? What is the relationship between them? Right? The, the, no, the, the, so first, find geometry transform. It's actually looking at the bigger space. In this case, like you see that it's returning a specific transform, linear transformation. Right, because you see that you have a denominator. So it's look at for look at the larger range set. Where fine region transform just limit itself to a fine transform. Right. But if you actually so in principle, if you give you know a other point set to find geometry transform, and then you take that same values, that same number and give it to find region transform, you should actually get the inverse transformation. So they should coincide if it's exact. We have to wrap up here, unfortunately. I have to go. Um, I don't think we're quite finished here. I think we need to, you guys should do one more investigation of the relationship between find geometric transform and find region transform. And then, you know, if, if we've got a crisp answer to that and how those relate to images, then we should be able to take care of this in like 10 minutes. Make sense? Okay. All right. Disappearing. All right. See you guys okay. soon. Thank you.